Welcome to Positive Thinking TV. How to experience God's love. Are you feeling forsaken? Or abandoned? Or does it seem like you have been rejected, neglected, or relegated? Does it look like nobody is with you again? Or like all have abandoned you? Do you feel like nobody loves you? Or does nobody cares about you? Or do you just need to know that someone loves you and cares about you? If those are how you feel, well, I have good news for you. There is Him that loves you and cares about you. His love is worth more than a billion love. He is your Father and your Maker. He is your God. He is the Lord. He is Jesus Christ. He always cares for His own. And you are one of them. He is love. Personified. If you know this, then you have no reasons to worry or be afraid. You have no reason to despair or get discouraged. The good news I have for you is that God loves and cares for you more than you might have known or thought. For He is your Father and Maker, your Husband, your Redeemer and Comforter. And He is also your God. Your Maker, who is also your God, loves you and cares for you. He says I should comfort you and remind you of His love. Hear you, therefore, the word of the Lord, you child of God. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 1 to 2 the Lord says. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. If you don't know or have forgotten, you are the Jerusalem the Lord is talking about. He is saying that your battles or frustrations are now over. In life, there will always be time for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 To everything, there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, it is now your time to rejoice. For the time to favor Zion has come. Psalms 102 verse 13 Thou shalt arise, and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time, is come. You are the Zion, and your time to be favored is now. Today is your morning, your weeping has endured, and your morning is here. Psalms 30 verse 5 For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Your time is here. God says I should speak comfortably to you. And to comfort you. That the end has come for your predicaments and seemingly abandonment. For you are his project, and he cannot abandon you nor forsake you. For he is your maker, your God, and your redeemer. And his plans for you are of good and not of evil. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. His love for you is without bounds and unquantifiable. You have got to know this to experience it. Stop the feeling of despair or unloved or hopelessness. Your Creator and your God is omnipotent. He can do all things for you. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 Now unto Him, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. God can abundantly do those things that give you concerns and sleepless nights. Only if you can trust in His love and have faith in His word. As applicable to those concerns. The Lord is your husband and as a responsible husband. He is even more than, He is obliged to love, care and provide for you. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 5 For thy Maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is His name, and thy Redeemer the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall He be called. So cheer up, you are always remembered, for you are in His book. He is saying to you. In Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15 to 17 Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands, thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste, thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. You see it. What a great assurance by the monarch of the entire universe. 
God is saying that He knows everything about you, including your challenges and that you are in His plan. What a blessed assurance! And if indeed you know and believe this, so why worry? Why give in to anxiety and fixation? Even when God is saying that He loves you with an everlasting love, that is even more than a mother's love to her suckling. And don't forget that, mother's love for her baby. Especially the suckling is one of the strongest ever known love of all time. Yet God is saying that He loves you even more than that. So what justification do you have to worry and panic? What are your justifications for that feeling rejection, abandonment, and dejection? Is it because of disappointment, health challenges, family challenges, marital challenges? Unmet needs, expectations, or financial challenges? What is it? Even financial challenges which most times have been the reasons for worries and anxiety. The Lord has said that you are covered in His providence and provisions. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 34 Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin, and yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Psalms 23 verse 1 also collaborated this when it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2 He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Verse 5 Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. What another great assurance and faithful promises which we can always bank on. If we can understand what the Lord is saying here. He is saying that, if you allow Him to lead you, you can never go wrong or get stranded. You can rest assured that He would provide all you need. This is a faithful saying that we can always take solace in it. Because faithful is He that promise. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised, as believers, we have no reasons to fret or worry unduly. God's love covers us and is more than sufficient for us. All that he is asking of us to believe is to have unwavering faith in his words, of promises. If God our Maker is our husband, it, therefore, means that God loves and cares for us, as a good husband does for the wife, and even much more because he is perfect in all things. Worry and anxiety is therefore unnecessary. All we need is to understand and always be conscious of God's love and care, and to align yourself to it, by soberly and meditatively reflecting on a. what the scriptures say about God's love. b the accomplished work of Christ on the cross, and c. Carefully watch and reflect on nature, and the creations of God. In the light of their sizes, God's providence, His protections, etc. Of which without you may never be able to fully understand and appreciate the magnitude of God's love. On the magnitude of God's love for us, the Bible has this to say. Romans 8:32 He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things 
With this, what other proofs do we need of God's unquantifiable love? All that I believe is necessary for us. I repeat, is to align ourselves to His ever available love. So we can fully experience and enjoy it in fullness. Talking about aligning ourselves to His love, the Bible reveals. In Romans chapter 5 verse 5. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. God sheds His love in our hearts. That we might fully grasp, practice, and understand the deepness of His love. I believe that He did this. Firstly, due to the plethora of incidences. Like hunger war, famine, diseases, conflicts. Deaths, and deprivations. Which often tend to introduce controversy and questions about the genuineness and authenticity of God's love for man. And secondly, due to man's imperfection and love due to his fall. Though notwithstanding, we know, have proof, and can testify that God loves us. Otherwise, how can we describe his daily supplies? Providence, healing, and provision abundance in the supply of our necessities? And there are no reasons or grounds to doubt God's love, for they are all over us. Challenges are usually tests of our faith patience, genuineness, and loyalty to God. And God always clears them off when He has proven it to us. God's love for us is not a pre-bargain, it is pure and gracious. Romans chapter 5 verse 7 to 8 illustrates. Very few people will die to save the life of someone else. Although perhaps for a good person someone might possibly die. But God shows His great love for us in this way, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And in verse 8. It says that while we were yet sinners, without love or care about God, Christ, at the instance of God, come and died for us, to save us of pending doom and damnation, without any attachment or pre-bargain. God took our deserving punishment of death upon His Son. What love more can be more than that? To collaborate the aforequoted scripture, in John chapter 15 verse 13 says, The greatest love a person can show is to die for his friends. Even if any can do so. It should be for someone who loves, venerate, and supports him. But not for someone who does not even know him, nor has regards for him. That notwithstanding, Christ came and died for our salvation. Which the Bible says. 1 John 4:10. This is what real love is, it is not our love for God, it is God's love for us. He sent His Son to die in our place to take away our sins. This is even though we did not love nor care about Him. Yet love propelled God to send His only begotten Son. To come and pay a costly price for man's rescue. As we see, in John chapter 3 verse 16 to 17. God loved the world so much that He gave His one and only Son so that whoever believes in Him may not be lost, but have eternal life. God did not send His Son into the world to judge the world guilty, but to save the world through Him. Careful and conscientious consideration of this can undoubtedly help us appreciate, understand, and experience the nature and the magnitude of the love that God has for us and should prompt reciprocation. But beyond this, as we have earlier noted, the true love of God can only be shed on our hearts by God Himself through His Spirit. Only then shall we be able to assert like Paul. In Romans chapter 8 verse 36 to 39. As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. While the understanding of the sacrifices and sacrificial love of God for us could prompt head perspicacity or appreciation of God's love, the scriptures make it clear that the actual experience of the love of God in its fullness is at the instance of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that sheds the love for God into our hearts. 
before we can truly experience the love of God in its fullness. In Romans chapter 5 verse 5, the Bible stated, and this hope will never disappoint us because God has poured out His love to fill our hearts. He gave us His love through the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to us. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank You for the unquantifiable love You have for us. Help us understand more about this love. As we have shed it in our hearts. Help us love and to keep loving You. And all objects of Your love, humanity, in Jesus' name. Amen. We appreciate you watching this video till the end. Consider subscribing, so that you do not miss out on other exciting videos, that we post every Wednesday and Saturday. Click on any of the videos you will see on the screen carefully handpicked for you to enjoy at the end of this video. We hope you like and drive value from this video. We love you.